Hi, this is Simon McDad here. Um, this is going to be the um, third and final um, episode of the um, three videos that I'm making on the experience that I had going through the divorce process um, with my um, ex-wife, the um, malignant narcissist. Again, quickly recapping, um, the malignant narcissist is a little bit different in that they get their supply through a feeling of power and control, through baiting and um, confrontation with people. You know, basically an argument is like ice cream for them. Um, conflict is energizing to them. That is how they feel powerful is based, you know, trapping people in conflict. So again, not the funnest person to try to work out a custody agreement, um, you know, or divvy up um, assets during a divorce. Um, so I think, um, you know, I had mentioned in an earlier video that one of the experiences I had was, you know, meeting up with my um, ex-wife to discuss custody. You know, she had proposed something just um, disgusting, um, abhorrent, and when I kind of reacted in, in shock to her, um, she exploded out of her chair, you know, knocking the chair over. We were in the middle of a Starbucks. Immediately, there's silence, and she grabs her papers and goes, you know, sh half, half shuffling, half running out of Starbucks, knocking over chairs, you know, put, you know, slamming the door open. And the reason I bring that up again right now is that I don't know if it was the stress of the um, divorce and separation at the time, or if it's a part of narcissism itself, but just the um, occasional, like almost psychotic breaks where they will react to a situation completely abnormally, um, you know, just in a way that does not fit with what is actually happening. Um, additionally, you know, sometimes she would just have these breaks with rea reality where she might say or do something that just made no sense at all. And um, I, 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 she, I don't know, just kind of a splintered person. I mean, I, I've heard some people um, make the argument that narcissistic personality disorder should actually be a subcategory of um, multiple personality disorder. You know, I, I don't have an opinion one way or the other, but I do understand where people can sometimes get that. I mean, you, I mean, with any narcissistic person, you have the true self, which is, you know, buried deep, deep, deep. And then you have the false self, the mask that they present to the world. And then, you know, to a large extent, the narcissist thinks the mask is their real self. They identify with the mask. And then you have these like situations where they just might have a break and go into like a third, um, you know, personality, so to speak. Um, you know, I don't know. It, it does fit to me to some extent, or at least it would be an interesting um, way to look at the disorder and possibly give some more answers as into what the heck's going on inside their crazy heads. Um, so back to the divorce with the malignant narcissist. So um, by this time, um, we were selling the house because of the, um, you know, divvying up the assets. And, um, you know, I experienced the thing that many people experience with um, divorces. I was still naive, clueless, um, you know, came home one week after, you know, being separated and found a lot of my stuff had just been either sold or thrown away. Um, so again, like my recommendation to anyone going through a separation or a divorce, especially one with a narcissist, is to go through the house, find all the valuables. And what I mean by valuables, I mean things that, you know, maybe have some monetary value, but also things that have sentimental or symbolic, you know, value to you and get those out of the house, hide them, you know, just 
put them away so that the narcissist does not have a chance to either sell them or throw them in the dumpster. Um, because most likely, as evil as narcissists are, they'll do it and they won't think twice. And then, you know, if you confronted them on it, they would probably deny it or say, oh, I thought that was trash or, you know, or something like that. But, um, you know, but anyways, I, you know, experienced that, which a lot of people experience. Um, you know, I already spoke about how traumatic, extra traumatic it was on the kids because she'd become very authoritarian with them, which was a, a very much a personality change. And also those um, psychotic breaks and stuff um, happened actually more often with my kids than with me. So the kids would call me all the time and just say, mom's not right in the head. And they would you know, explain situations where my ex-wife would be raging, you know, going through the house, you know, smashing toys, breaking computers, um, you know, things that belong to the, to the kids, you know, screaming and then collapse on a chair and just start crying and weeping and blah, 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 like that. And then go back and forth. And as you can imagine, that's horrifying to anyone, let alone a child seeing their own mother do that. And, um, you know, as I said, like th this kind of unhinged, crazy, unregulated, you know, um, behavior, you know, completely unregulated emotions um, happened a lot with my, um, you know, ex-wife, you know, the narcissist as we went through this process and honestly, as far as um, I've heard, I don't think that's really changed. I think even post-divorce, you know, my my kids even now will sometimes share these stories about her just losing it, you know, falling into the you know onto the floor in a fetal position and crying, and then getting up and and then raging, um, just disgusting. So um, the um, Divorce um, finally happened, or the, you know, the divorce hearing. Uh, we go to the courthouse, and she's crying. Um, she, you know, she's just absolutely weeping. And, I, you know, I look over at her, and I'm just, like, um, disgusted. I, I just want to vomit. I mean, it, I'm assuming those are just complete crocodile tears, because... She had no reason to cry. I mean, she literally tore the family apart, sabotaged the marriage, and then basically, once it was dead, danced on the grave. She has no she had no right to cry or be upset about it. I mean, it was her actions that brought us to the point where we're meeting in a courtroom. And so again, like I don't I don't know if it was crocodile tears for the lawyers um, or, or for me or, you know, people in the courtroom or if like in her cuckoo crazy narcissist brain was sad about something. I honestly don't know. And again, to, um, you know, bring up how all the narcissists read the same playbook. This is what it, my covert narcissist ex-girlfriend did the same thing. You know, we had a hearing, two, you know, two months ago and she was in the courtroom just, you know, weeping, getting the tissues, you know, sobbing, you know, doing the heaving. And I just wanted to throw up. I'm like, you know, I basically had to press charges. I'm the victim and you're, you know, you're the one, you're the defendant. Why are you crying? You know, I, it's just gross it's so repulsive um so you know you know back to the divorce so my um you know ex my wife at the time is doing this blah 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 and you know it goes pretty quickly because i just you know we're both done and so you know gavel hits you know you're divorced blah 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 and so we're leaving the courtroom and 
my narcissistic ex-wife, after she's done all these things that I've described in the past couple of videos, you know, reaches out to me and says, I just want you to know I've always loved you and I will always love you. And my jaw just went, you know, and I just glared at her and walked out of the courtroom without saying a word. It's like, no, you don't. No, you didn't. And again, it's one of those things where I don't understand, you know, what that was. Um, she, um, you know, obviously knew that like after everything she had done that I wasn't going to trust her um, at all, let alone something she said after all the lies. And so, you know, and again, like I, I don't have, um, you know, a view into her mind. So I don't know if this, this is one, again, one of those weird narcissist things where that's what they believe in the moment. I, I don't know. I mean, because that's the thing. I cannot imagine what she thought she could possibly gain in a, in a stupid attempt to manipulate me. Like, who says I love you in court when you're getting divorced? Um, that's just gross. Um, so, um, you know, needless to say, like, you know, that happened. And so I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, yay, it's all done. Everything's good. Nope. Um, we were divorced, but she didn't change. She was still a malignant narcissist. So every time we had to have a discussion around custody, picking the kids up from school, paying for braces, um, you know, someone spending the night um, or going camping with the uncle or something like that. Um, it was the same old, same old. Um, every interaction was an argument and always went off in weird directions so that like a simple question like, um, you know, hey, um, Friday, um, uh, you know, am I picking, you know, am I picking the kids up from your place or are you driving over and dropping them off? Like, you know, I, I, you know, which would be easier for Friday, and, you know, and then I would get like a 4,000 word response talking about, you know, stuff that I may have done or said 15 years ago, um, you know, stuff, you know, that she told her friends about me. I mean, it would just go everywhere. And I'm just thinking like, it, it was just a simple question about like the kids, like who brings them where. Um, but yeah, again, like um, you have to, you know, gray rock. I mean, you, you just basically have to make sure that when you interact with your ex um, that you keep it without it thoughts without feeling without opinion and again my recommendation without questions i would just try to just make them statements like the sky is blue um fire is hot because even then they will argue but um and that's the other thing um broken record um that's a another great technique to learn when you're dealing with a narcissist is that once they vomit up they're, um, you know, flipping the script, um, shifting the blame, you know, all their logical fallacies, you know, you did this in 2007, ignore it all and just repeat the statement, you know, do I pick up the kids that day or do you bring them to my house and just keep coming back to that until they answer you. And so, you know, that is another um, recommendation that I would give because, again, the narcissist is not going to change after the divorce at all. And, um, you know, it, depending on the narcissist, 
you know, as time goes on, they'll probably get worse. I mean, I, 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 I have a feeling that as narcissists get older, um, they just kind of degenerate. I mean, I don't know how else to, um, to, um, you know, ex- ex- to describe it. Um, so it was, um, bad and the games continue. Like, I mean, another game that I can think of to share, just kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So, uh, we would communicate by phone, um, very quickly. She would say, don't, you know, I don't want you calling me. I don't want you calling me at all. I just want to communicate through text. Okay. I don't care. That's fine with me. And so I would communicate with text and say, you know, hey, you know, our daughter is going to volleyball practice on, you know, um, or volleyball camp on the this weekend. And And she would come back and say, you know, stop texting me. Don't text me. Only communicate with me via email. <laughs> oh, okay. And, you know, communication through email. And then it would be like, don't communicate to me through email. I only want you to text me. Okay. So I, I text her and then she would say, no, I, you know, I don't want you to text me directly. I want you to do a group text to me and the kids so that the kids can see what is going on. And I'm like, okay. So I do a group text to the kids or, you know, to her and the kids. And then it would come back and say, you only can (laughs) communicate to me via email, via my lawyer. (laughs) I wish I was making this up. And at that point, I'm like, sure, you know, every email, you know, your lawyer charges you $75. So I am more than happy to communicate to you via um, your lawyer. And then after a while, the um, lawyer got tired of this and basically extricated herself from the communication. But anyways, I, I, I think that you can see what you know i'm getting at the the um narcissist will not stop trying to make you crazy trying to um cause as much trouble as possible and again the the important thing to remember with dealing with a narcissist they do not play to win they play for you to lose and so you can approach them with win-win solutions, maybe even, you know, be accommodating, extend an olive branch and say, yeah, you know, this is a little bit hard on me, but you know, I'm, if, you know, if we do this, this will really help you out. And they'll say, no, they'll, they will take that olive branch and they will stab you in the eye with it. They're like, I don't care about winning. You know, I don't, I don't care about having something that works for me. I just want you to suffer. I want you to hurt. And that is more important to me than me feeling good. And again, like that, that's how insane and um, malicious um, narcissists think and how they um, prioritize things. So um, hopefully this has been um, helpful. You know, if, if anyone has any other videos that they would like me to make, just, um, you know, ask in the comments and um, I will try my best to um, get to them.